Good morning, dear students. Uh, today we will be discussing industrial democracy and participatory management, which is one of the topics in our unit one for employees' relations and labor laws. So talking about industrial democracy, um, democracy is wherein you are giving uh, your freedom to anyone to act in a manner in which they feel like acting or you are giving them a comfortable environment which is that environment is being chosen by them they are the part of that environment and then they work in that particular environment so democracy basically if we go by the actual meaning of the democracy and correlate industrial democracy with that then it means that the management in industrial units is by the people of the people and for the people here people include all those who are concerned with the industrial unit so industrial democracy connotes an equilibrium between the rights of the dominant industrial hierarchy and the rights of the employees with a broad and social objective <clears throat> so industrial democracy basically is a very wider term which is concerned with you know uh, which is concerned for both the of the rights of the um, employer and employee both what for for the you know maintaining cordial and harmonious relationship in the um, enterprise or in the industrial unit and this industrial democracy cannot flourish without making your employees a direct party to that so that means uh, um, industrial democracy and your workers participation because it itself is by the people of the people for the people so if until and unless you are making your workers part of it by giving them more right to part to be very participative then only your industrial democracy will flourish salient features of industrial democracy are workers are treated as partners in the organization and are given an opportunity to participate in the management when we say that workers are treated as partners in the organization that means they they have their you are going you are as an employer you are going to listen to their suggestions you are going to listen to their uh, uh, advices and you are going to make them uh, give their suggestions in the important decision making of the organization when we say decision making it does not mean the that you are uh, that we are talking about um, strategic decisions but we are talking about the strategic decisions uh, their influence the impact and for that particular thing you must there has to be open line of communication between both management as well as the worker and when we say open lines of communication that means you are going to listen to them what they have to say um, for that for the decision which has been taken by the management depending upon that nature and type of decision that has to be taken then the various methods through which industrial democracy can be introduced are committees joint work management council suggestion schemes and etc this will be discussing further in our when we discuss workers participation in management so so the these could be the various methods through which industrial democracy can be introduced where through which you can make them uh, work in a in the particular setup in the particular environment then workers are generally allowed to participate indirectly that is through their representatives when we talk about industrial democracy generally we mean uh, we are talking about very big enterprises where the number of workers is huge where it goes on in where the number of workers be, may not be represented solely so they have to be so they so how they are going to um, um be participative or be vocal in the um, uh, in the industry it is through their representative that means through their unions they are going to participate then the morale of workers is boosted as they have an effective say in the management if you are making them uh, suggestive if you are making them vocal in a positive manner so their obviously their morale will be will be boosted because they will feel that management is listening to them and management will listen to them we have a best example most of the you can say quality enhancement and improvement techniques are from japan 
because Japan, uh, like we have a lot many companies, for example, Toyota and all that. So they have, they make their employees um, uh, say uh, very vocal and they let their employees suggest, they let their employee to think and then communicate it to how, how and what they think about efficiency and increasing, you know, um, effectiveness of the organization or the uh, enterprise may be uh, say production, may be the quality, may be the time adherence, everything. So that, the, that way is morale of the workers is boosted if you are going to make them part of the system. Then there are objectives of industrial democracy. Obviously, to create a sense of belongingness of workers to the organization, the more you give them chance to speak up, the more you, uh, the more they uh, speak up their mind, more they will feel uh, belonged to the organization, more they will feel uh, connected to the organization. Then to improve a sense of commitment to the organization objectives, plans, and activi activities among employers. When there is sense of belongingness, from the employer employee side that means or they look upon their organization as their own platform where they can flourish so there is integration of their own goals as well as organization goals so that which which may which gives them a sense of commitment that if if they work for the organization betterment that means they are working for themselves then to satisfy the psychological need of the employees. Psychological need of the employees, which, where, where, when we talk about uh, uh, self uh, need of belongingness, need of security, need of affection. So um, all this would be uh, catered through giving them, say, uh, a participative say in the management. Right. And let them choose their um say arena which where they work and how they work then to respect the human dignity of the employees because at the end of the day we must not forget that we are dealing with the human beings and human being ha is the uh, is one of the in intelligent creatures uh, on this earth who thinks who can evaluate who can analyze so when you are giving him a chance to think, to evaluate, and to express in a suggestive manner, so that maintains the dignity of human beings, which will add on not only to the goodwill of the organization, but overall harmony and peace of the organization. Then significance of industrial democracy. The advantages of industrial democracy are that there would be full cooperation of employees for the, of the implementation of decisions as they participate in decision making. It is very obvious that when you are making, uh, say, um, you are um, one of the party that is employing, uh, to, um, uh, so to, to be suggestive, to um, give ideas about the decisions which management is going to take or which will be taken. So they will extend their full cooperation and resistance to the um, the after after uh, aftermath of the decision would be minimized. Then industrial harmony can be maintained as employees feel the sense of belongingness. This we have already discussed, and obviously it will be, lead to the production uh, more of the and it will enhance production in the industry. And then, as I said, that workers' participation in management for effort to flourish, to let your industrial democracy work in an organ enterprise. Uh, what is required is in workers participation because until and unless your workers participate in the management industrial democracy in the in its real sense will not be uh, will not be there in the enterprise so workers participation in management it is the practice in which employees take part in management decisions and is based on the assumption of commonality of interest between employer and employee in furthering the long term prospects of enterprise and those working in because ultimately, the uh, underlying thing is that both the parties, that means employer and employee, they are working. There is a common platform. Why they are working? Because they want their enterprise to go, grow. And there is integration of their personal goals and organization goals. So there's a commonality of interest between both the 
between both employer and employee and which will help in making a workers participation uh, to uh, proceed in a much better manner so the concept workers participation uh, in management it encompasses of the following that it provides scope for employees in decision making of the organization obviously the participation may be at the shop level departmental level and at the top level we will be discussing that what could be the level of uh, participation as i told you that it depends on the nature of decision and the type of decision which uh, organizations are going to take and how you can take suggestions from employees on that particular decision so the there would be variation the participation includes the willingness to share the responsibility by works as they have a commitment to execute their decision obviously when you are making a uh, workers uh, to participate in the decision making so they will it will automatically include their willingness so for uh, implementation and sharing responsibility of that particular decision the participation is conducted through the mechanism of forums which provide for association of workers represented and the basic idea is to develop self control and self discipline among work so that the management becomes auto management auto management is supposed to be the highest form of workers participation in management wherein every person knows what is to be done and how it is to be done in the betterment of the organization in the best possible uh, say efficiency of the organization so uh, talking about this um, when we talk that um, be, but be, before uh, we go for uh, say um, uh, discussing about workers participation and uh, how it goes for so um, they are basically uh, there are certain conditions prerequisite uh, conditions for effective participation if you want your employees to participate in um, in full fledged manner then there are certain conditions firstly there should be strong democratic and representative unionism for the success of participatory management as i said that employees they when they are huge in number they are uh, they they participate through representative union that means they participate through unions secondly there should be mutually agreed and clearly formulated objectives for participation to succeed because until and unless there is integration of the goals and commonality of the interests it won't succeed in the enterprise thirdly there should be a feeling of participation at all levels we know uh, generally what comes into the workers mind is that it is only the top level management or top uh, middle level management who uh, who has uh, who has the right to participate or who is heard more so that feeling should not be there so partis feeling of participation should be equally at all the levels then fourthly there should be effective consultation of the workers by the management then both management and workers must have full faith in the soundness of the philosophy underlying the concept of labor participation because until and unless they believe in the system they tend to believe that this is going to enhance production this is going to enhance effectiveness this is going to grow make your organization grow further then only uh, there there would be you know um, you know uh, cooperation and um, full fledged involvement of the workers uh, then um, education and training make a significant contribution to the purpose of working of the participatory management because it is very much essential that you make your employees educate and train that how to participation does not mean that you need to participate um, as your top management is participating because the level of participation will vary so for that education and training is required then lastly forms of participation um, areas of participation and guidelines for implementation of decisions should be specific and there should be prompt follow up and action and feedback so as i say, as as i was uh, i'm saying that the level of participation will vary from you know um, uh, from decision to decision the type nature of decision the type of decision uh, industry or organization has to take so it will definitely de uh, depend on that now we have there are forms of that how um, 
how how we can participate in an i say um, in in the management so workers participation as i said has to be at uh, possibly at all levels of management the only difference is that the degree and nature of application uh, for example it may be vigorous at lower level and uh, you know slightly fainted at top level and broadly speaking there are for, uh, there are um, say five levels of participation first is information participation it ensures that employees are are able to receive information and express their views pertaining to the matters of general economic importance then second is consultative participation here workers are consulted on the matters of employees welfare such as work safety and health how a work final decision always rests at the option of management and employees views are only of advisory nature then uh, associative participation when it is an extension of consultative participation as management here is under moral ob obligation to accept and implement the unanimous decision of employee that means uh, uh, power of decision uh, remains with the employees or you can say with the majority and then administrative participation it ensures basically greater share of works in the charge of uh, managerial functions so here decisions already taken by the management they come to employees preferably with alternatives for administration and employee they have to be uh, they have to select the best from those of for implementation and this is a participation and lastly so this is the highest level of participation where decisions are jointly taken on the matters related to production welfare etc and this is called this is a participation so this this is the the these are the various levels of participation which um, in in it which involve your workers to participate then we have forms of workers participation in management now there could be different forms so the, there were le levels of participation that to basically to the extent of information now there is level that means in the structure what would what would be the level of your uh, you know form of workers participation so first is joint consultation model uh, well in joint consultation model the management consults with the workers before taking decisions so the workers represent uh, uh, their view through joint consultative committees generally this form is allowed in you know uk sweden and poland then joint decision model in this form both the workers and management jointly decide and execute the decision so this is a this is a form of participation which is generally followed in companies which are you know which are uh, usa based or germany based particularly west germany based and then self management or auto management scheme as i was saying that the this this is one of the you can say highest form of participation um as compared to joint consultation and joint decision and this is this is also known as auto management and the uh, auto management uh, for auto management we have the ideal example of yugoslavia in this model the entire control is in the hands of workers so um, where this um, in yugoslavia uh, the state industrial units are they are run by the workers under a scheme called self management or auto management scheme and if we go uh, further higher in the participation or workers participation in management then it is at the representation at the board uh, under this method the workers workers elect their representative and send them to the board to participate in decision making process the participation of workers may be formal or informal in the formal participation it takes the forms of formal structures such as work committee shop council production committee safety committee uh, maybe canteen committee as well so the informal informal participation may be such as supervisor consultant uh, consulting the workers for granting leave overtime and allotment of work um, so the, these are such some forms of uh, workers participation in management now uh, when we talk about that what basically is, um, is the uh you know purpose purpose of workers participation basically it uh, encourages communication at all levels since both partners of production are involved in the decision making 
there will be a fewer changes of distortion and or failure in communicating the decision and uh, it helps in managing resistance to change you know which is inevitable so for the growth and development of industry changes have to be welcomed otherwise the organization will stagnate and be left behind so if the need for change is jointly felt by all partners of production its acceptance can be high so workers participation in change strategy can facilitate acceptable solutions with a view to secure effective and smooth implementations of decisions so uh, if now if we talk about workers participation uh, in management in india uh basically uh talking about if you talk about um, industrial you know participation as a general it was uh, precisely given importance only after independence that to uh, when after industrial dispute act of 1947 it was the basically first step in this direction which recommended for the setting up of work committees so the joint management councils they were established in 1950 and it increased the participation of labor in management but the management scheme in 1970 it gave birth to bro, you know board of management and since july 1975 the two tier um, participation model called shop council at the shop level and joint council at the enterprise level were introduced and based on the review and performance of previous schemes a new scheme was formulated in 1983 and the new scheme of workers participation was applicable to all central public sector enterprises except only those which were specifically exempted and the scheme with equal number of representatives operate both at shop as well as plant level so the various functions of participative forum uh, which laid which were laid down in the scheme could be modified with the consent of parties uh, uh well there was uh, a bill came to this particular effect in 1990 and prior to workmen partic workers participation uh, management in management bill 1990 all the schemes of participation were non statutory and concentrated on particular levels for effective and meaningful participation at all levels a bill was introduced in parliament on 25th may 1990 so the bill provides for the effective participation at all levels by formulating schemes of participation and for electing representative for participation it also provides for secret ballot uh, the appropriate government may appoint inspectors uh, to review participation schemes and the bill also has provision of punishment for those who uh, contravene any of the provisions of the act uh, but somehow it um, workers participation in management in india uh, You no, know, it, it couldn't. Uh, it it did not take off in the manner it should have been. So there uh, there were certain reasons. Um, because uh, if we see workers' participation scheme in India, it provides a wide scope of application and upliftment of workers. But uh, there there were certain factors which were responsible for its failures, and uh, in particularly attitude of management towards the scheme. was not very encouraging the representatives of workers were not given due recognition by the management then the um, you can say the attitude of trade unions towards scheme was negative as uh, they considered that these schemes were reducing power of trade unions because now the um, worker was directly participating in the decision making they, it is it was giving them the um, you can say right and a way it was carving a way for them some trade unions they did by court joint management council meetings and the management uh, should have appreciated this thing and accept them in full faith and uh, obviously trade unions too have to cooperate with the schemes and foremost thing and important thing is that workers have to be educated so um, it it will take time and now if this scenario is different organizations are realizing and they are doing well and uh, hopefully it should take up in much more concrete manner in which it is expected to take thank you this was all for today